Hello everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Becca if we have never met before and welcome back if we have met before. I'm so glad to have you here. I have another plant video for you and I'm very excited to, well, very excited and very nervous to share actually. Today I'm going to be talking about something that feels a little bit controversial and I am building up some courage in order to film and post this video. So I'm glad that I've got my trusty Leo. He's down here playing. So he, if you see him popping up and down, that's what's going on. But anyway, so I wanted to talk about the concept of a plant ban. And if you are not familiar with what a plant ban is, it's basically when a plant person decides that they are not going to be buying plants for a certain amount of time. It could be a few days, it could be a few weeks, months, up to a year, whatever really the plant person feels is necessary. And the purpose of a plant ban is to prevent you from purchasing plants. If your collection is becoming overgrown, if you are exhibiting unhealthy spending habits and all of these sorts of things. Let's just get into it because I can already feel myself jumping the gun and just getting right into it. So let's get started. I'm wanting to share my opinion on plant bans because I feel that it is not one that is commonly shared about because I don't know. I don't know why more people are not seeing it the way that I'm seeing it, or maybe people do and they're just not saying that, which usually is what ends up happening. But I am a person who does not adhere to the belief of plant bans or that a plant ban is actually effective. And so the reason that I do not agree with plant bans is buying plants is not inherently wrong. And I think that plant bans are kind of very tightly, like psychologically close to diet culture. And if that sounds a little bit crazy, I am going to be explaining this more in the video, but I just have a feeling that plant bans don't actually work most of the time. And the reason I say that is I have been observing the plant community for a few years. I've been a part of it on Instagram for a while. I am in no way judging anybody who partakes in these kinds of behaviors. I absolutely have overspent money on plants and will continue to do because it's hard not to. Plants are beautiful and it is a big part of my life and sometimes we can use it as a crutch when we're going through something emotionally difficult or I don't know, whatever else. And so I just want you guys to know that I'm not in any way judging anybody. This is not a life and death situation. It is literally just buying plants or not buying plants but I figured that I would share this information with you if you have ever felt pressure to enter into a plant ban before. Buying plants is not inherently wrong, and I think that it's important to understand why you want to go on a plant ban if you are thinking about it. And if it is to be a good steward of your money, I think that is a beautiful thing. I think that spending our money wisely and being careful with it and having a nice chunk of savings is very, very healthy. But a behavior that I have noticed so much with plant bans is as soon as they end, people, hi, <laughs> as soon as they end, I noticed that a lot of people will just go on a huge shopping spree and spend so much money on plants, probably more money in one day than they would have spent on the entire three month plant ban. Does that make sense? So that is just what I have noticed, the behaviors that I have noticed, like plant ban over, I'm going to fill up my shopping cart with $300 worth of plants. It's just not a great way to spend your money. You're kind of kidding yourself if you think that that was actually effective. And I bring it back to diet culture by saying, you know, I have also adhered to this before. Um, I am a human, so I have felt unhappy with how my body has looked from time to time. And so I have said to myself before, well, I'm not going to eat candy, chocolate, all these sweets for a week. And then once that week is over, I'm like, let's go to Dairy Queen. <laughs> and had I allowed myself to indulge in those things, you know, every once in a while in a healthy way, I wouldn't have felt the extreme need to go get ice cream once it was over. There is a lot to be said about intuitive eating on its own. And we should also be thinking of adding to our plant collections intuitively, which means that we are not disallowing ourselves from buying plants for a certain amount of time and then buying four times what we would have purchased because we stifled ourselves from filling that need. Is this making sense? I hope that this is making sense. With the plant community growing so rapidly and the community being just a beautiful jumble of people from different cultural and socioeconomical backgrounds, and honestly, like location-wise, 
it is very difficult to keep up with everybody. And as I've mentioned in past videos, I definitely want to be mindful about my spending this year on plants just because I already have so many and there is just really no need to keep collecting and collecting and collecting. And that is my perspective, but perhaps someone like myself who when I first started buying plants, I was buying plants left and right. Like every single day I would go and look around at a big box store or at a nursery and I would leave with at least one thing. And those spending habits were just very unhealthy. And I don't have a lot of plants from my early collection still around. And that is problematic, I think. Part of that is learning what I do and do not like, but also part of that was just me using plants as an outlet to soothe myself. This doesn't mean at all that I am never gonna buy a plant again because I am. But the thing is, is we have to make sure that we're being good stewards of our money and that we are not just buying plants to buy plants and to keep up with everybody else. And I think that's a really, really hard thing to say and really, really hard thing for even me to adhere to because I find out about this new anthurium and now I want it. And I don't know why. I don't know why I feel like I have to have it. But, you know, in doing some research about you know, why we want things that we can't have so badly. I found this little quote from an article that is actually from Grey's Anatomy and it could not be more true. Like it is absolutely intoxicating to not have what we want and to continue searching and searching and searching for it. If we convince ourselves in our mind that buying plants is a bad thing, then we're going to want to do it so much more because that is just human nature. We want things that we can't have. And so I, if you do fall into the habit of going on a plant ban for three months and then getting out of the plant ban and buying three months or more worth of plants in one day, all you need to do is reframe your thinking in that buying plants is not a bad thing and it shouldn't be. We should be buying plants that make us happy and if plants don't make us happy anymore, we should sell them. There are so many ways to be a good steward of your money in the realm of houseplants. What I have done in the past actually is kind of created a little envelope in my mind of plants that I have sold and then all of the money that I get from those plants. I just kind of put it away so that I can use that to buy other plants. And I have thought about like if I was to move, like a big move, I would probably sell a lot of my plants and then hold on to that money that I made and then go and rebuy the plants again if I can't bring them with me, like if I'm moving overseas or something like that. I just think that there's so many ways that we could be good stewards of our money with houseplants and just avoiding those unhealthy spending habits that honestly were very present in my life at the beginning and middle of my houseplant journey. This whole thing is still so new. Like, if you are watching this video right now, we are at the forefront of houseplant ownership. I mean, not technically speaking, because houseplants have been huge forever, like in the 70s, but in this day and age, I mean, we are at the forefront, like with houseplants being on YouTube, Instagram, all of these things, like we are at the forefront, like I keep saying. There are going to be probably hundreds of plant YouTubers in a year, and there's going to be thousands more accounts created on Instagram for houseplants. So that is just so many more opportunities for us to be sharing these kinds of messages and honestly just finding ways to be content with our collection as it is. And so I wanted to just share a little tidbit of information that I shared on my stories a couple days ago, somebody asked me, how do you stay content with your collection when you see everything that everyone else has? And I think a really big part of that is just truly appreciating the plants that you have and looking around. If, if I'm ever having a time where I feel particularly ungrateful, I just spend some time just quietly with my plants. I'll, maybe I'll turn on a podcast and I'll just start watering my plants or I'll start pruning my plants, or I'll make a video with my plants. And that honestly has helped so much because I'm looking around at every single little life and thinking about the journey that we've had together. And if you can, try to keep your house plants alive for multiple years because there are some plants in here I've had from the very, very beginning. 
And my relationship with them is just so special. And this probably sounds absolutely crazy to somebody who just clicks on this video. Like imagine how strange I sound to somebody who randomly clicks on this video and has no idea about houseplants. <laughs> there is a truly a relationship that can be formed with your plants. And when that happens, you are so much more likely to take care of it if it is starting to die. If something is going wrong with it, you are so much more likely to step in and be willing to fix it rather than putting it on your patio and letting it die, which is something that I am absolutely so guilty of. I have totally bought plants before just because I felt like I was never gonna find it anywhere else or it felt like a novelty to find it in my town. And the truth is a lot of those plants end up on the patio because I just don't care about them. And so I think that as I'm growing in this journey of collecting plants, I am doing my best to be a better steward with my money and instill healthy spending habits within myself without the addition of a plant ban or honestly, it's like a plant diet. And as we all have gathered by now, I hope diet culture is just very toxic and it maybe works for some people, but for the masses, diet culture is just not helpful. And so with diet, like intuitive eating is so much better. And so I think that with plants, intuitive spending is a lot better as well. My goal for this year is to not use my patio as a plant funeral area. <laughs> there will be times when a plant just stops sparking joy for you, where it stops kind of mattering to you. And that's totally fine. I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. I mean, there are shirts that I bought in high school that I never thought I'd give away. And I'm like, what is this? I don't, why would I ever wear that, you know? So I think that it's very normal and it's just important that we are honoring the plant and not giving it a slow, painful death on the patio. <laughs> now, I'm not going to be perfect in that. I know that I will slip up and just lose my cool and just throw a plant away and that's okay too. But the point is, I'm not going to make that a habit. I'm going to really try to break that habit, actually. So if you are on the same page as me with plant bans and you think that they could be possibly problematic and remnant of diet culture, comment down below and maybe expand on what you think about it. And if you completely disagree with me, that's cool too, because like I said, sometimes plant bans do work for people. So I just wanted to share this message and um, talk about something that is kind of scary. I definitely was like very focused in this video and like not very jokey, but that's just because I wanted to make sure that I portrayed my point accurately and I didn't like mess up or make this not something serious because sometimes I like to be serious and especially with cultural stuff, like I don't know, it just really gets me fired up and so, Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope that you found some value out of it. And don't forget to leave a comment down below telling me what you think. If you're not already, make sure that you follow me on Instagram and subscribe to my channel. I would love to have you join our little family here. And that's all I have to say. So thank you again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye. Say hello. Yes, that's right. You're my best friend. Bye.